Joining us now is someone I'm very thrilled to have on, and I think you're going to find uh, this discussion fascinating. He is a prosecuting attorney in the Los Angeles area and the vice president of the Association of Deputy District Attorneys. Uh, he's not just a prosecuting attorney. Uh, he is the deputy district attorney of Los Angeles County. Uh, and uh, his name is Eric Sadal, and I welcome you, Eric, to the Judge Janine Tunnel to Towers Foundation Sunday morning show. Now, um, Eric was born in Los Angeles. His father was DA in the 70s. Uh, I believe that Eric is, uh, he's got law enforcement in his blood, running through his blood. Uh, and uh, his uh, he is the kind of person who is a true prosecutor. He believes in law and order and truth and justice. So welcome, Eric. Uh, I, I'm thrilled to have you on. I, I could, there's a million places we can start, but I'll just hit it, Eric Seidel with, uh, Seidel, with what is happening in Los Angeles with George Gascon, a George Soros-funded prosecutor who should really be the public defender and not the prosecutor, and what you and deputy DAs are doing uh, to change things. Well, good morning, Judge, and thank you for having me. Um, you know, we had a, a pretty monumental election last uh, last year in Los Angeles in terms of the district attorney's race. Uh, we had a sitting district attorney, Jackie Lacey, the first African-American mm-hmm. female to actually be the DA of L.A. County. Um, she was a, I consider her pretty progressive on many issues. She was a moderate Democrat, middle of the road. But, you know, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, usually as a prosecutor, you kind of see the law in the same way. And you mm-hmm. see your duty as a prosecutor in the same way, which is to follow the evidence and protect the public and do so in a just and fair way. Uh, we uh, had an election where a um, the former San Francisco district attorney, George Gascon, who was about to lose his reelection in San Francisco after he trashed that city, uh, fled oh. to L.A. Oh, to he was D.A. Re-election. in San Francisco? Oh, yeah. He's the one who started this whole trend of, uh, you know, massive amounts of property crime when when he was the DA of San Francisco, San Francisco led the country in terms of property crime, right. uh, m- mainly thanks to him. So he has a long history uh, of trashing cities, uh, and um, now he's doing that with our county in terms of Los Angeles. He, um, one of the things that you'll probably find pretty amazing is one of the, you know, you a lot you 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 can tell a person by who they surround themselves with right and right. his uh some of his principal advisors two of them in particular are not just former public defenders uh they are die in the wool public defenders in other words they they think that the whole system is corrupt should be abolished and have actually gone on you know on um to, to you know, talk to students at the universities talking about the abolition of the criminal justice system. Well, but, so, but Eric Sadal, uh, uh, you are in, in you are one of the people in charge of this movement that is actually suing the DA. Now, I was a DA. I mean, nobody ever thought about suing me. Certainly not in my office. <laughs> what, what? What? Tell me about that. Well, look, we did not do that. Uh, lightly, we did it to protect our members because one of the things he was doing was t- telling us to not follow the law. He was actually telling us to break the law. California has, as you know, a, a three strikes law. Right. One of the first, one of the first in the country, not the first, but one of the first in the country, probably one of the most successful uh, su- uh, successful proposition, propositions out in California mm-hmm. was extremely e- effective in terms of reducing recidivism. Um, and he told us not to follow that law. Well, that's illegal. You can't do that. He's the executive. He's not the legislature. He can't overrule the uh, will of the people, but he said to do that. So we had to go to court and uh, to protect our members uh, and our ethics. And um, we got an injunction from a judge saying that he has to follow the law. I mean, 
That is amazing. That is amazing. First of all, suing him is amazing. I mean, kudos to you. Good for you. God bless you for doing that. But his job is to protect victims. Why is this guy not being recalled, Eric? Well, so actually, the that's what's happening right now. Uh, a group of victims, um, particularly mothers of uh, right. of murdered children, uh, are are leading a recall movement um, to to get rid of him because he has failed in his duties to protect the uh, the people of the state of California. Right. So there is a re- recall movement. It just started. Um, and they are certified. They served him last week. They're going to start collecting signatures, I think, in about 10 days. So there is going to be a recall movement uh, to to get rid of him. Well, uh, you know, the, the, the truth is, Eric Sedell, who is the uh, you are the I guess the vice president of the organization uh, of deputy right. DAs. How many yes. deputy DAs are there? So we fluctuate, actually, from right now we're at a pretty low number because a lot of DAs have left, um, understandably. Mm-hmm. Um, and, there was, and there was a hiring freeze for a little while. So I think right now it's about 650, 700. Wow. Uh, usually we're at about 1,000. Interesting. So if you think well, about that, we're, we're, we're running at like 65% capacity right when now. When is this guy up for re-election? <clears throat> when, is, when is George Gasco and the DA in California, in Los Angeles, up for re-election? Well, if the recall happens, he will be up on the ballot in November of 2022. Perfect. If the, if the recall does not happen, we would have to wait another uh, three, three years from today to to be able to get rid of him. The problem is the urgency. The reason why, you know, there's this movement to recall him is he is going back into past cases and gutting those cases and trying to have, you know, basically he has a policy of, uh, you know, criminals first. He wants to release as many criminals as possible. And it's really because of his, his philosophy and who he surrounds himself with. These are, why, why did this guy run for district attorney? Because, you know, as you know, the DA has a lot of power, a lot of discretion, and most of the time, the discretion is used wisely. Um, but there has been this movement to get to replace uh, district attorneys with, uh, you know, these regressive prosecutors who don't believe in uh, in the criminal justice system and want to really upend the whole system. Deputy DA uh, Eric Sedal, what's it like going to work for you? You know, it's. I think the morale in the office is is rock bottom. Um, yeah, it's it's hard. You know, p- people, you know, become prosecutors because they want to protect the public, and they owe. You know, one of the great things about being a, a prosecutor is that you always get to do the right thing. You never have to compromise your ethics or your morals. You always get to do the right thing if you're doing the job correctly. And we know he's not doing the right thing. Well, I, I got to tell you, Eric, I mean, being the DA was the best job um, of, of my life. Uh, and it is the best job in the world as far as I'm concerned, because you can fight the bad guys. You can protect the victims who can't speak for themselves, who can't stand up for themselves. And the idea that this guy, Gascon and Larry Krasner in Philadelphia, who this week says there's no crisis of violence and there's no crisis of crime. And, and you know, we can go Kim Fox, who let Jussie Smollett out, who's just been convicted uh, uh, in, in, uh, uh the, these people are just out of their minds and they are, they are literally taking out law and order. And I don't know what their goal is. And yet we can all say their goal is to get the, the, the defendants out, but their goal is to victimize the rest of us. Because when you do not have law and order, and I don't have to tell you this, Eric Sadell, uh, when you do not have law and order, you have chaos and anarchy and, and vigilanteism. And Kyle Rittenhouse is, an, is a perfect example of that. And it's going to start happening over and over. And shame on uh, the people in Los Angeles if they continue to let this guy stay in office. And uh, what we'd like you to do, Eric, is stay in touch with us uh, and let us know how the lawsuit is going. Is there any repercussions, Eric Sedell, from uh, Deputy DA Los Angeles, from Gascon? Does he dare fire you guys? 
Well, luckily, Los Angeles is a city or a county that has strong civil service protection to make sure that, you know, an elected leader cannot just upend the entire um, system. So there are it's it's within the county charter. There are these protections. So he has to abide by, you know, luckily, there's a, the rule of law still exists in Los Angeles in terms of that issue. Well, you know, that's that's great for you. And, uh, you know, uh, w- the most important thing is to stay in touch with the victims and the victims' families. But going back, regressing, looking at old cases as if you don't have enough going on right now with the smash and grabs, which I'll, I'll get to in a second. But looking at old cases and letting criminals out of jail on cases you had nothing to do with. This guy's he's a bad he's a bad person. But talk about the smash and grabs that we see every day in L.A. Last week, the police arrested, I guess, 14 suspects behind uh, 11 robberies at stores last month. Uh, over a quarter of a million dollars worth of merchandise stolen. What's going to happen to those dirt bags? Well, the district attorney has a policy of probation. Oh. You know, probation is the best for everyone. And oh. that's basically been his policy. And what I think is even, you know, what is even more sad is that there is, he has shown absolutely no leadership as to this issue. You know, if, if any reasonable district attorney would have been like, look, this is a problem. We're going to form a task force. I'm going to get my DAs involved. We're going to make sure that when these people are arrested, they are going to be held on bail and they're going to be detained and we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that a message is sent that you can't do this. Right. Well, instead, all he did was he didn't get involved. He didn't speak about it. And he only started speaking about it two weeks after it started occurring. And then he basically blamed the whole system on it. And you know, this is a guy who, who cannot take a, he, he does not He's devoid of accountability. Yep. And yep. He, he just doesn't understand our role. He doesn't understand the leadership position he has. And what he will do is he'll say, look, these people, it's not their fault that they're stealing and killing and murdering. It's the system that has failed them, the criminal uh, you know justice what? system that has failed them. Shame on him. <laughs> All right. Eric Seidel, we appreciate it. Um, keep fighting the good fight. Uh, America is with you. This is not uh, what America is all about. Eric Sedell, Los Angeles District Attorney's Office. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judge.